Hayden, what did you eat for breakfast today? I had bread. breakfast today mac and cheese yes because i just gave you mac and cheese yes what time did you wake up um several hours ago to find several um more than two and less than 12 i woke up at like 8 a.m because i always wake up at 8 a.m no matter what time i go to sleep really 8 26 every day what time is it now uh i like 1 30 something yeah about 1 30 ish in the morning yes mm-hmm. no yeah no, yeah. no, it's not. We're, it's tri- their- we're tricking the listeners. They won't be able to tell. All of this. We could be lying about all of this. Yeah, we're actually just two clowns in clown college and pretending to be high school, former high school students. Yeah, we're actually um, both. We're actually both two clowns that are drama majors pretending to be regular we're people actually for both women. assignment. <laughs> um. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Outrospection. Welcome to Outrospection. I'm. I'm your. You're one of the hosts. Um. Rashad. And this is Hayden. And that's me. This is out retrospect out <clears throat> outrospection. Because Rashad can't talk. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, sunny side up, woke woke him up. It's, it's early in the afternoon, so basically morning. It's one thirty AM. It's put black outside. Whatever you like to yeah. wherever you like to imagine us I, I, is I'm where act- you can place us. Actually, I just want to—I just want to hear where everyone I'm at, what they see in their brains as they hear us talking, because that's super interesting to me. I would love to—I would love to know what that image is. Because whatever it is, it's way more interesting than what it actually is. It, it always is. Just I like—I hope people imagine us in like some great like amphitheater, or like in a tiny room lit by only like a fireplace with like books on all the walls. <laughs> and in between us is a table with like a totem of Kanye West and a totem of Prince that we just are constantly staring at. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I, I want them to imagine us in a place that's much nicer than anything that we actually do, and I want them to imagine us being there because we would look so out of place. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but, but we're dressed appropriately. So like mm-hmm. in this in this dark you know fireplace, cozy room, and some giant mansion that we're obviously recording in, we're both wearing like smoking jackets and like silk smoking jackets and pants mm-hmm. michael what color is your smoking jacket um it's probably a, a nice a nice dark beige dark beige i'm really disappointed you said that um anyway but since i'm colorblind what color is my smoking jacket um to you gray to <laughs> me <laughs> fuck you uh, <laughs> that, that's cold yeah um anyway no what color is it oh fuck i forgot um, probably like, probably like, uh, like a blue. Yeah. A, a dark, a dark blue or a light blue smoking jacket. I feel like if I, well, even is a smoking jacket. It's like those like silk things that like rich people wear. It looks kind of like a robe, but it's just the jacket. Oh, 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 they're not dark. Beige. That's totally what we're wearing right now. Yeah. Oh, the mine's probably like, like a, like a deep maroon. That's exactly what I was thinking yeah. for you. Yeah. Actually, I was thinking gray, but. <laughs> Okay, so um, wherever you imagine us, it's it's either like wherever you imagine us, it's either right before morning or right after morning. So, exactly. um, breakfast time. Uh, what's what's a good breakfast? I like cereal. I don't really like. I'm not a big pancake person. I've never really been super into pancakes. Waffles, I'd say, are better than pancakes, but I like thinner waffles rather than thicker waffles. The funny thing is that we just had pancakes yesterday. We had pancakes yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Damn. I remember, I know it was yesterday because I went to lunch after. Oh, yeah, with, with that one, with, with one lady. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, you know, but Damn. otherwise. Um, but, see, I don't, I'm not a big pancake person. I'll eat pancakes if they're there. I don't like French toast. I don't, I don't like French toast either. Like, mm-hmm. I don't dislike French toast, you know. It's kind of it, whack. Like, if someone were to serve me French toast, I wouldn't not eat it. But I wouldn't make French toast. Yeah, exactly. Plus, it's like, it's way too hard to make for just how okay it might yeah, be. Yeah, and it's like, I know how to make French toast. Like, mm-hmm. if I really, really, really wanted French toast, like, if I woke up one day and I was just like, you know Craving what, I French really toast. feel like French toast, which has never happened. Yeah. Then I could totally make French toast. But. But I, it's not I, worth it. It's not, I don't, I'm not that, I'm not that interested in French toast. Mm-mm. I like cereal. I, I've changed my preferred cereal over time. 
because like I still am into su- super fruity cereals. Like I, I, but sometimes I like just like the blind stuff. Like I used to eat Raisin Bran Crunch all the time, because it's fucking great. And I use I like I like Fruit Loops. I like Lucky Charms. If you don't like Lucky Charms, that's kind of weird. I'm be honest. I have a weird opinion about Lucky Charms. How's your opinion about Lucky Charms weird? Uh, because I feel like it's just like, like without the marshmallows, it's 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 it's, it's an it's a very okay cereal but you eat it with the marshmallows i know but it's like the marshmallows shouldn't carry it same way i feel about raisin bran actually i'm noticing a pattern have you ever had raisin bran crunch where it's like the the flaky stuff is sweet like sugary no i haven't it makes the whole experience so much better i can imagine my favorite cereal personally is probably uh the top 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 is honey nut cheerios really yeah i've never been a big fan of honey nut cheerios (sighs) i like regular cheerios or the multigrain Cheerios. What? Yeah. No, Honey Nut Cheerios, Cheerios, just because it's like, they they never fail. You know, they're always, they never fail. They're always consistent. Above that, I like Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch is probably, I, I probably the best cereal ever. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably one of the best cereals. Yeah, I really, I really, ever existed. Captain Crunch is great. I like it though, with the regular Captain Crunch and the Fruity Ball thingies. Yeah, either one, either, either one, one works. works though, yeah, like they're it's, good. Like it's, it's all it's a different it. thing, and it's not like one is one is better than the other, but mm-hmm. they're two different experiences that are just great. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I concur. I also uh, a girlfriend of mine introduced me into Reese's Puffs, which I know you can't have Reese's Puffs, but now I eat Reese's Puffs sometimes. I'm allergic to peanuts. Don't tell them that they'll use it to assassin you. They're gonna send me a box filled with peanuts. Exactly, they're gonna assassin you. Oh no, I don't want to get assassinated. Assassin, <laughs> assassinated. <laughs> we're not stupid. No. Um. If you think we're stupid, then okay. Um. Uh. If you think we're stupid, it's because we act stupid. Yeah. For our own amusement. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I do enjoy a good a good egg. I like eggs. I don't like eggs. They make my stomach hurt. Say eggs. Eggs. Okay. I was just checking. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's this big thing, especially because where we live, like people pronounce things very drastically differently. Over eggs or ags or whatever the like eggs, eggs. I hate that eggs. Like, how did I say it? I don't know. Eggs, eggs. eggs. The e is it? Eh. Eggs. Yeah. Eggs. People are just like eggs, eggs. Fuck no, eat a dick. No, it's, it's eggs. Um, it's a low e. Yeah, but otherwise, how do you, how do you say um the stuff that's in Rolos? Caramel caramel okay we can be friends still no i'm just kidding i I, a lot of people i know say caramel my whole family says my whole family says caramel i have no idea how i learned to say caramel ew probably from like tv or some shit like all those little kids like all the little kids now that are like talking in british accents because of peppa pig which i think is funny as hell (laughs) that's great the british it's it's the it's the recolonization of america where they're brainwashing children to speak in british accents using using peppa pig using peppa pig i like turkey bacon i don't i don't eat pork I'm a vegetarian. I used to love bacon a lot, but now I don't really fuck with it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, I don't like pork, so I don't really eat anything that has, mm-hmm. I don't eat pork, so I don't really eat anything that has pigs in it. I like sausage. I like, um, what are you doing? My hand got sore from being on my leg. Um, I like sausage. I like, but all these are made with turkey. Sausage is pork. With, with turkey sausage. Turkey sausage. Okay. I don't like turkey generally as a meat. But when I, ate I like turkey as a meat as a substitute for pork, but I don't like turkey as a substitute for chicken. When I when I had to eat turkey for like um Thanksgiving and stuff, when I used to eat meat last Thanksgiving, I didn't eat turkey. <gasps> oh shit! Breakfast potatoes. That's my biggest thing. Hash browns. I'm really into hash browns and potatoes. I like potatoes. I don't. I like I like hash browns, but I also like bre- I make the best breakfast potatoes. Breakfast potatoes are great too. Anything with potatoes in it, I'm generally cool for. Potatoes I'm, are great. I could give away my recipe for breakfast potatoes, but. Don't. Then, no. Then you then you'd ma- be able to make it, and I and don't want you to. Yeah, exactly. You need to keep that shit a secret. Mm-hmm. But it's good. Or else, some big food corporation is going to steal it from you. Yeah, and they're going to like they're going to they're going to eat your family. Yeah, exactly. That's what they do. The, the big cor- food corporations look steal your recipes and they, eat your family. What they do is they go onto the internet and they scourge. They um, that's the wrong that's the wrong word. Scourge, scourge. I don't know. Search. No, like they like. They're like go, like doing a deep, deep, deep search though. Never mind that. Anyway, they look deep on the internet and they like search the, all the corners of the internet for small podcasts where people are giving away <laughs> recipes, 
and then they take those recipes and make them million dollar recipes then they find out who made the podcast and eat their families exactly it's it's um it's truly tragic it's a real thing that's and affecting families that's why i try to keep my recipes mm-hmm. to myself because i know that i i you don't want Kellogg's eating your family yeah how would you feel if Kellogg's ate your family yeah well it'd be a good superhero story for us <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd probably be pretty upset, but then you get like superpowers or some shit. So one day, Kellogg's ate the family of two podcast co-hosts. They went on to become the biggest vigilantes in the world, called the Serial Killers. That was the that was great. That was a great tie-in because it's Kellogg's. That was great. Yeah, multiple clap. Everyone at home, clap for Michael because that was great. Uh okay. So, um, all in all, breakfast, what, 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 what don't we like for breakfast? Don't we like? How do you feel about pizza for breakfast? Um, similarly to the way I feel about mac and cheese for breakfast, um, if, I, if, I'm, if I find myself eating these things for breakfast, it means that I'm eating breakfast way later than I was supposed to. I'm okay with pizza for breakfast. I'm okay with really anything for breakfast. I mean, I don't think there's particular things that you can't eat for breakfast. I'm not huge on fruit for breakfast. I like fruit. I like fruit too, but I'm not huge on it for breakfast. I am. And like, I know that that's like probably a controversial a opinion. Um, if you have small children listening, you, they might not want to hear my opinions as they promote unhealthy eating. Um, but I don't know. I don't really like raw food. That's fair. No, it's not. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big supporter of fruit. I'm a, like fruits candy, but better. That's how I feel about it. I think candy is candy. Candy's candy's crap. Fruit is great. This morning after my bread, I had some fruit. I feel like I couldn't I couldn't compare fruit to candy. How do you feel about the fact that I just had straight up bread for breakfast? Like with nothing on it? Oh, toast is also a good breakfast. Toast is good. Yeah. No, but like my 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 padre makes bread in the oven like real real you've, you've Oh, made. oh, so like that. So like that. I thought you just like got a loaf of bread. No, not like sliced bread, like ate, baked bread. Like sliced bread. No. I'm not that weird. I know it was like baked. Like good. I could totally do that though. Like, I've done it before. I've just eaten bread. Me sometimes too. if I'm like, if your stomach hurts, it's good to just eat some bread. Not even if my stomach hurts. Sometimes I'll just come home and then I'll be like, um, um, food, eat bread, and then I'll I'll grab bread and eat it. Like no, and then I had some butter on my on my dad's Mediterranean baked bread, and I just ate it. Butter is butter is an essential ingredient mm-hmm. to bread. When I was a little kid, all the time though, I'd have like I'd I'd make toast. I'd put like jelly on it, or I'd put butter, and, and then I'd sprinkle some um, brown sugar and cinnamon all over. That sounds excellent. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'd be hard find. I'd be hard pressed to find a bread based meal that doesn't taste better with butter. How do you, what do you put on your bagels? Bagels. 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 What do you put on your bagels? My bagels. Mm-hmm. Say bagels again. Bagels. I must be hearing something. I'm from the Midwest. I can tell. Um, uh, I don't like bagels. You don't like bagels? I used to eat bagels all the fucking time. I feel like bagels are the accountants of donuts. <laughs> That's great. That's amazing. Uh, I used to I used to just put butter on my bagels, but then I figured out cream cheese was a thing. Yeah, I'm gonna eat bagels because inevitably it just happens. It happens, yeah. You can't you can't be you can't you can't run in so, certain social circles and not eat bagels That's because true. then let's say that you're you've been invited to a bagel based function where um they're serving bagels mm-hmm, they and everyone else in the room is eating bagels let's say that you're at you're in a you're in a business meeting and there are mm-hmm. bagels in the room and everyone else is eating bagels you don't want to be the one person that doesn't have a bagel in your hand because then they know you're not a power player and you're a power player in the, and you got to c- communicate that you're a power player in these meetings so that they know that they want to close the deal with you but and you also need to eat the bagels to free the donuts of their accountants <laughs> when you say stuff like that you know i'm gonna take it too far the, the bagels should be able to, the the donuts should be able to control their own money yeah how do you feel about donuts um not for breakfast not for breakfast no i don't like i don't really like cake or cupcakes for breakfast That's either true. fuck that noise just because like it's too much like, it's too dense for that it's you, too like because it's so it's so like light yeah and i can't Really? I can't really do that. I see. I think like I think like as breakfast, you don't want to eat something that's super heavy. Like breakfast is like you have something, you have a little bit of something just to start off your day. I feel like dinner is more of like a heavy food meal. 
but I feel like I feel like they're too light in terms of their flavor and in terms of everything. Like I think they make my stomach feel too full. Like no, if I eat if I eat like cake and stuff like that for breakfast, then I will feel like I'm not getting any kind of nutrition or anything. Which is very fair. Yogurt is a good breakfast. Yogurt is. I need to eat more yogurt. Yogurt is great. Mm-hmm. If you don't like yogurt, I don't know what's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Like yog like like because I know people who don't eat yogurt. Why don't they eat yogurt? If they think it's gross. How? I don't know. It's just like it's like like little fruit paste. Yeah, but even even like vanilla yogurt. Vanilla yogurt is pretty good. Yeah, vanilla yogurt is so versatile. Like, you can do anything with it. Yogurt with fruit, though. I think I think as a little kid, I just thought straight up yogurt. I think as an adult, I'll also eat a lot like of breakfast fruit. smoothies are good. I love smoothies, but strawberry banana smoothies are my. Just, I love them. I think yeah, f- smoothies are good. I feel like the. I feel like we. You mentioned waffles. I love waffles mm-hmm. a whole lot. Belgian waffles. I like cinnamon waffles. I like like Waffle House waffles are better than regular waffles. I think than like the waffles I eat here. I've never gone to Waffle House. You've never been to a Waffle House? Mm-mm. Do they have Waffle Houses in Maryland? I uh, perhaps. Cause they, I know they have Waffle Houses in Ohio. If I, if they do, I haven't been to one. Damn, that's tough. I think all in all, the conclusion that we can draw to is that breakfast is good. See, now I'm thinking about like all the breakfast food that I miss from eating, cause I don't eat breakfast that often. Uh, and I was thinking about strawberries because I like strawberry flavored everything. Strawberries are great. Strawberries are good. Great. We have a friend that doesn't like strawberry ice cream. We have two friends. I threw a cup at his face over it. Yeah, I, we were at a party, and I was talking about, and I, I think I'm, we mentioned this in a previous episode, that I like strawberry milkshakes. And my two friends were, like, trashing me for liking strawberry-flavored ice cream and milkshakes. And Michael Deadass just threw this solo cup at this kid. Yeah. It was, it was, I felt really bad. I had to apologize to this kid. It was like a random outburst of rage. I mean, it, it wasn't hurt or anything. It was no, like, damn. it was just like... I can't let you, I can't let you say say these kinds of things and then you can't you can't you can't say certain things and then expect me not to react violently. I'm so I'm totally kidding by the way. Let me just <laughs> clarify that. Uh, we're gonna have to get because into someone anger. will use that against me some some someday. Of course they will. Are we gonna have to get into your anger management here, Rashad? Mm, not on the podcast, Howard. If you're listening, um, that was a joke. Was please a joke. don't please don't rescind my um acceptance. Yeah, definitely. Don't don't kick him out of your school. He's too smart. I feel like scourge was the word I was looking for. Yeah, it was scourge. That's tough that you remember it later. I mean, but I'm glad that I remembered it at a point. That's true. So all in all, I feel like the moral of the story is breakfast is good. It's um, it's a nice meal. It is a nice meal. I'm I'm more of a dinner person though when it comes to my favorite foods. Um, my favorite food is potatoes. My favorite food is spaghetti. I love spaghetti so much, Rashad. You have no idea. I really love spaghetti. Like spaghetti is great. You can't see my facial expressions, but I'm just He's very confused. It's just like I love spaghetti, man. I love spaghetti so much. You can only eat spaghetti sometimes. I eat spaghetti at least three times a week probably. Mm. I eat potatoes quite frequently. Potatoes are good for breakfast. You can make your hash browns, your breakfast potatoes. Um you can for for lunch, you know, you can have your um your, your tater tots. Um, or perhaps even like maybe um, maybe some French fries. How do you feel about fettuccine alfredo? Uh, it's good. It's, it's great. Solid. How do you feel if I put broccoli in that? Solid. Definitely. I love broccoli in my, in my fettuccine solid. alfredo. Yes. Broccoli is good. Broccoli is a solid. Broccoli is great. A solid, um, a vegetable. Solid vegetable. A mm-hmm. solid veg. And I know you like green beans too. I eat a lot of green I beans. I do indeed enjoy green beans. But I only but cooked though. I don't like cooked, no, raw, I don't, I don't I like don't, raw food. I don't like raw I don't like raw blo- broccoli or raw green beans. I don't know how people eat raw broccoli. That's fucked up, I think. Yeah. At the school at our high school they served us raw broccoli all the time and it made me mad. Well, they didn't serve me raw broccoli. They did. They had it as an option. And I they had that, it as an option, yeah. but they didn't serve it to me because I didn't eat it. I mean, what the fuck they would try and serve me? <laughs> I mean, but I was really upset because sometimes I'd get the broccoli and not thinking it would be raw, and then I'd go to like grab it and it'd be cold, and I'm like, <sighs> you should have known. Probably at a certain point, you should have known. Man, I just wanted some nice. Have they, have they ever cooked broccoli ever? Yeah. Have oh, they had steamed broccoli with cheese. But is it in the same place as that? That's broccoli with cheese is really good. Broccoli with cheese is. I one time my mom and I had for dinner. Like, we tried a baked potato, and she just put cheese and broccoli in it. It was delicious. That sounds excellent. Which brings me back to what I was saying about potatoes. Um, 
breakfast, you know, you can have your hash browns, you know, your breakfast potatoes mm. diced, cooked, however you want to prefer p- prepare your breakfast potatoes. Other potato balls. Um, potato balls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The little tiny ones. They're like like ball shaped. Mm-hmm. You just pop them in your mouth. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I've had that. Hmm. Bam. Then for lunch, you know, you can have your your tots. You know, your your, your, your tater tots. Tater tots. Fries. You can also have fries. I'm a, I'm a very I'm a very big indulger in the in the French fry. Mm-hmm. The fries of the French line. Mm-hmm. The fries of the French. Mm-hmm. And then you know for your for your dinner you can have your your mashed, or your baked. Mm-hmm. Twice baked. You yeah. know what twice baked potatoes are? No. It's like when they're cut in half and then it's like a mashed potato inside like the skin. Then you put some cheese or bacon or whatever the fuck on it. It's delicious. My mom makes the best twice baked potatoes. You don't eat bacon. I know, but I'm saying for you. I don't eat bacon. Oh fuck! I eat turkey bacon. For all for all our meat eaters out there. Yes, I feel like you just have we given away too many recipes. No, because I haven't told them how to make them. I've just told them the ingredients. Hmm. If you're listening, um, kill us. Kill. If you um, if you if you please don't eat our families and eat our families, we're gonna we be really upset. You. We'll sue you. We'll sue you. And I feel like that's that's a reasonable um, statement. Fair. We'll definitely press charges. Definitely, I'll like, commit to that. I'm definitely gonna say that um, you will you will be seeing me in court. Mm-hmm, definitely. <laughs> um, for sure. We've talked about food for a long time. We have, but that's okay. Because I can always edit it down. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, like you know, I feel like we had some pretty good food thoughts. Food is interesting. Like, food is a thing that you know people people are very much very passionate about. Mm-hmm. Now we can switch topics. Otters are pretty cool. Otters are otters are pretty cool. Have I told you that one story about otters in like India that I saw on Planet Earth narrated by Sir David Attenborough? No, oddly specific story, but continue. Well, it's because I think about this every time I think about otters, right? Is that so on this on this on this episode of Planet Earth, like they're in India and they have like these I'm not sure if they're crocodiles or alligators. I'm pretty sure they're crocodiles. One of the two. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or it's a caiman. They are some giant reptile. But anyway, what the fuck is a caiman? You don't know what a caiman is? I feel like I do. Is it like a tinier reptile? Or alligator? It's like a tiny reptile out. Al- al- it's like a tiny alligator crocodile. You're from the Caribbean. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't be out there. Like I don't be out there enough that I would just be encountering like. You're not in the nature. No. Oh, that's fair. But anyway, like a, a large aquatic reptile. And these otters that live in the same rivers in, like, India, like, they are kind of hunted by these alligators. But, like, when the otters are all together and they're, like, otter gangs, it gets pretty cool. And so what these otters do is when they're bored, they will, like, get in their gangs and, like, start teasing and hitting and playing with and, like, aggravating the alligator crocodile thing just to make them mad, just for their own amusement. And they'll start, like, playing with them and, like, like squaring up with them. Yeah. Under pain of death, but there's like enough of them that they can like play with them. Yeah. You know. Otters are some tough fuckers. What's cooler, otters or beavers? Otters. I think so. Beavers only build houses and beavers are. Beavers can also knock down trees though. Yeah, to build houses. Yeah, which, I mean, what's cooler? I'm, I'm, I think, I don't think it's about who's cool. I think they're t- entirely different animals. I know, but, you know. Beavers also have the flipper things and the big teeth. I know, I don't like that. Why don't you like that? It's just, it doesn't look good. I mean, it's not supposed to look good. It's supposed to be effective. What about platyp? Platypuses? Platyp, yes. Or platypi, I'm not sure. Platyp. I li- they're, they, those used to be some of my favorite animals, too. Why? Because they're awesome. They fucking, they like, they have like duck bills. They lay eggs. And the beaver tails. And they're they lay poisonous. Eggs, and they have those poison fucking stingers in their legs that'll stab you and kill you. Yeah, fuck you. If you think you're fucking with, you're fucking with platyp. Platyp. Platypus. A platypus will end your life. A platyp will. And won't even lose any sleep. Not in, not, nope. It will continue. And then it'll just pop out an egg, like, damn. Mm -hmm. Mammal popping out eggs. Yeah. You gotta respect that platyp. Australia is a tough place, man. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Imagine getting run upon by a gang of platyp. Why are you calling them that? Stop trying. Thank you for, it wasn't raining, it was snowing. It was actually um, a hailstorm. It was it was chocolate rain. However you want to imagine the podcast is however you can imagine yeah. the podcast. That's the theme. Is that it's just it's just whatever setting. We're actually in a jungle in the Congo, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
How we're cutting out all the animal noises? We don't know. We're actually in Bill Clinton's basement. What noises would you expect to find in Bill Clinton's basement? Um, I think basement noises. Probably saxophone sounds. Do you think he he practices in his basement? Perhaps. I would, if I had a, if I had a saxophone, I would practice in the basement. No, but I feel like he probably has a recording room somewhere in his house. Not a recording room, but like a nice a little playing room. Perhaps. Is he still? Does he still play the saxophone, or is he too old? I don't know. I don't. I don't think you can be too old to play the saxophone. Yeah, you can. Can you really? My grandfather used to play the saxophone. He can't anymore. Why not? Because he's old. He has dementia. I feel like the dementia... And Parkinson's. I feel like those are more of a factor than his age. That's true. I don't know what's going on in Bill Clinton's head. I'm not here to judge. We're wherever you want us to be. Yeah, that's true. We're in, we're in your head. We don't actually exist. We're just... We're, we're pigments. Your, we're your conscience. We haven't spoken in a while. And we're here to tell you about otters and like food. And otters and food, because we're great hosts. Yeah. Our podcast is called Outrospection. There's so much weight, and we just throw it out. We just don't. We throw it right away. <laughs> Last episode, we literally read a teenage girl's Instagram spam comments about her boob job. Mm-hmm. Update, Jill is still recovering from her boob job. Pray for, pray for Jill's recovery. Thoughts and prayers. Yes. Um... Apparently, it hurts a lot. Mm-hmm. Does that make it? I'm wondering, like, how did you? How do you feel about that? About what? Boob jobs, or any sort of like, fa- plastic surgery. I feel like it's not really my decision. All right, what about on yourself? Well, I wouldn't get a plastic surgery. Neither would I. Me personally. How would you feel if you were with someone, and they were like, "Yeah, I want plastic surgery," um, and not good plastic surgery? No, yeah. not on boob jobs anymore. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, 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 I don't know how I would feel. Ultimately, it's not my decision to make. That's true. But would you like advise against it? Try um, and talk them out of it. I would want to. You'd I would like to have already. as much insight on why they feel like they would like to make that decision. That's true. Before I provide any kind of opinions. That's probably that. That's smart. Yeah. How do you feel if you're with someone? And they wanted to get a boob job. Um, I would want to know why they want to get a boob job. What 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 would be okay reasons for you? I mean, I don't. I I'm not the one who would be able to make any kind of decision. Which one would that. which one would be um justifiable justifiable uh, reasons? Well, like I said, like I can't really because for me to say that anything is not justifiable would be for me to impose an opinion on something that's a personal matter that's not really my business, you know. Do you want to hear a deeper question? Yes. Would you get a boob job, Rashad? Yeah, I, I actually I actually have intentions to get one within the next time. No, of course I would not get a boob job. If you had a small... If you... Never mind. <laughs> anyway. 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 Existence. How do you feel about existence? Because this is your topic. Oh. Um, well, I feel pretty... I feel pretty um qualified to speak on the topic of existence given the fact that i um exist how do you know you exist gotcha i can prove you exist well i can prove i exist and only myself yeah using like descartian philosophy which even then is kind of iffy because i could still just be a simulation that's programmed to think it exists tell me about descartian philosophy well, i mean i don't know the entirety of descartian philosophy but there's the very common phrase of i think therefore i am which means that if you go down, you know, the rabbit hole of questioning, do you know blank exists for, for 100% sure? So do I know Michael exists? No. Do I know I exist? Not really. Do I know the universe exists? Not really. Do I know I think? Yes. Well, then you can kind of work your way back into what you know actually exists. The only thing I really know exists is the fact that I'm thinking. I, I'm not, I cannot prove without a shadow of doubt that michael is actually real yeah and none of you listening can prove without a shadow of a doubt that either of us are real that's true you can only prove that you are real for all you know we're um for all you know we're simulations we we actually the the hayden and rashad you know in real life don't actually record the podcast they just created a computer program that makes the podcast and simulates the voices yeah, that's what that's what they did. Or better, we made an entire universe inside Hayden's office computer, and we take the podcast that the that the Hayden and Rashad record in that universe and release it in our real universe. 
That would be crazy. That would be a crazy movie. That I wouldn't watch that movie. It's already too convoluted. <laughs> it already sounds kind of bad. Convoluted doesn't necessarily mean bad. No, but it sounds uh, it sounds like stupid kind of. It, I mean, if they used it for a podcast, yeah. But let's say somebody like programmed an entire universe, and then like they figured out a way to like enter that universe, and so mm-hmm. they went into that universe in times. But then they found out within that universe there were other. So is is there's I think there's a Rick and Morty episode about something similar to that. There's this one TV show that my dad watches where it's like there's a different dimension and they like go between the dimensions, and like there was one episode where like they mentioned like you're sneaking these Prince albums across dimensions. He's dead in this one, and I'm just like, <gasps> of course you Prince don't. albums, Prince albums. Here, <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I'm really excited. You know what happens in like ten days? What happened? The new Prince album comes out. Which album is that? Originals. It is a kind of comp. It's not a compilation, but it is a collection of songs Prince rec- wrote and composed for other acts that he was associated with, other bands. How is that not a compilation? But it's his original demo versions that have been cleaned up and mixed appropriately. How is that not a compilation? Because I think uh, to say something is a compilation album to me means it's like a comp- like a greatest hits almost or something of the sort. I would say that for me to say something is a compilation album would mean that it is an album created of songs that were compiled to be an album rather than an album made of songs that were created with the intention of being part of an album. I think it's I think collection is a better work than a compilation. Um, I'd say that it is a compilation and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I feel like there are bad compilations and good compilations because that's they true. were compiled. It was compiled. It was It was something that was... They, uh, they were compiled after they were made. I can't remember the guy's name. Give me a second. The album was compiled by Troy Carter, who used to... I don't know. His name's somewhat recognizable to me. And he used to, like, I think was at some level of authority in Spotify. But him and kind of like Jay-Z and Tidal, really, this is their this is their album that they've made for the Prince Estate and with in um, cooperation with Warner Brothers Records that they're releasing and I'm super excited about because it has a lot of tracks that are really good that Prince wrote for other acts or wrote and then gave to other acts that I really want to hear his demos of and his not they're not demos but his recordings of before his reference demos. tracks yeah reference tracks and they've been I, I believe they've been mixed and you know cleaned up and everything for this release which will hopefully make them good and better than the crappy online bootlegs that are online interesting how do you feel about posthumous albums it depends Defi- all right, so how does it depend for you? Um, if it goes, I mean, of course, it has to go with the artist's wrist, artist's wishes. Exactly. So, if if an artist didn't leave a will, which this is, I'm really just quoting the prince, the prince's case here. Didn't he didn't leave a will? But he did say in several interviews in his life that when he was dead, he just wanted all of his music released. Um, I guess it just depends. Um, why they're releasing the music? Because most of the time, when artists music is released posthumously it's with the intention of making money off of a dead artist to capitalize on their death which i don't really fuck with yeah i I mean that's bad i think i think there's a level of taste that has to be put into it you know you have to maintain the legacy you you have to make money that's kind of the thing of the states that the states do which you can do that while i think you can do that while being tasteful and respectful to the deceased artist and you know releasing the things that they would have wanted to release there's there's always that level of you know if you if you're really trying to respect the the deceased you know what they would want and you can you can figure out right from wrong there which is why i mean i'm like i'm okay with most posthumous albums that i've listened to i think the president's estate so far has had a mixed bag because yeah, they fucked up in some places, but it's mostly minor fuck ups. But the but the new albums they have released, like piano, and microphone, and originals, while they're very limited in their scope, are some interesting and good stuff. And I'm glad that they're starting to reissue albums that haven't really that never really got big release that haven't gotten you know big vinyl releases, and they're giving stuff they're giving the more exclusive stuff to the hardcore fans like me. But I do think I do think they could be doing better. That's for sure. They could. But they, they, they could always be doing better. They, they, they need to get out. They need to really break the confines of Purple Rain. Because that's all, like, Warner Brothers especially have only been, which I, that's the only stuff they own. But they've really only been focusing on, like, Purple Rain era stuff. When, when there's, like, a lot of stuff that I know 
from the late 80s and 90s that would be like great to release nowadays yeah i mean i guess it's just access um hayden has been tasked with um if in the event that i uh, in the event of my untimely death mm -hmm. hayden has been tasked with um finishing and releasing my music mm -hmm. me and um brian Scholl, who was on a couple episodes ago of, of woozy him and I'm, in, I'm supposed to go with him with all of michael's remaining music and him and i are supposed to finish it together I mean, yeah, assuming that Brian would accept the job. He would totally accept the job. I would hope that he would accept the job. He would. He, he, he yeah, likes you I'd enough. Be, I'd be mad if he didn't. No, I wouldn't. And if not, I could always go to someone else. Because like, if, if, if he didn't accept the job, I couldn't be mad about it. Cause, You'd be dead. Yeah. Um, it's a real blower. It really is. It's an unfortunate thing. Mm -hmm. So since you know more dead artists or have listened to more dead artists than I have, what are some, how you, what are some bad examples of legacy, of estates and legacy? X is a huge one. X's album that came out after he died was clearly done just to capitalize on his death, given mm -hmm. the fact that he died at like the peak of his career. Mm -hmm. um, they released that album that was clearly not finished. Um, Drake has a song called Don't Matter to Me featuring Michael Jackson, which I like the song. I'm not going to lie. I like the song, but I know Michael Jackson would not have wanted his vocals to be put on that song because especially given the quality of his vocals compared to just on the song. Mm -hmm. Like I know that I know that that was there just for the for the sole reason to sell based on Michael Jackson's fame. Yeah. That's fucked up. I'm And I, I like the song. Like it's a good song, but I like I can tell. Yeah, I think I think there's a level of fuck. I don't I'm not really comfortable with stuff like that. I think that, you know. Like it has to be done with integrity. Not even that, but, like, if you're going... Like, I think it's weird that, like, an artist would take, like, a, a guy who's been dead for a while now and, like, record with him, quote-unquote. Because that's just, like... If for, for some reason, that rubs me the wrong way. I feel like that's... But that's something that Drake's done a whole, a whole lot. And I feel like it's not all entirely just for the cash grab. Part of it is um, to pay tribute to some of these artists. But, like, like but Drake, for example, cover. tried to produce a, tried to produce an Aaliyah album. And that ultimately just was didn't work out because everyone kind of kind of didn't want didn't want him to do that like 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 if somebody dies then their music becomes immortalized whatever they release mm -hmm. and this is something that i kind of feel pretty strongly about is that the music that an artist when an artist makes music and makes or makes anything and puts it into the world then it's in the world forever that's and true. it belongs to the world. Mm -hmm. So, whatever an artist chooses to put into the world is his can be their legacy. And so, if an artist dies, then whatever they did not choose to put into the world was meant to be was intent was probably not intended to be a part of their legacy and to be a part of what they created. Mm -hmm. So, for for record labels and for industries to capitalize on that and take these unfinished or er, private songs and release them into the world and intent to make money without regard to the legacy of the artist and to the integrity of the of the artist's um creation isn't isn't fair to my isn't fair to me you have to respect their wishes and their, and their wills if they have them yeah definitely that's that i think that's the most important thing you have to be respectful you have to be tasteful exactly which which i i mean it's sad to say that there are people in the industry who don't respect a dead person's wishes which is super fucked up i think it really is um because at some point it just become it just has to do with it just Respect. has to do with what you can make money from mm -hmm. which i mean that's not how i mean it's better to make new things than to go back to old things that shouldn't that weren't intended to be released i think like i have plenty of stuff that i've created that i don't want released and the reason i don't want it released is because it's just not for the public which is fair you know and like, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna at some point write down this. Like, I, t I talk about this plan that I want Hayden to get my songs finished and get them out. Mm -hmm. But not all my songs. Mm -hmm. like, I have no. songs that I don't want touched. I, th I think I know you well enough to figure out which ones are a green light, and which ones are a red light. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna release that track of just dog noises. Shh, 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 shh. And the other one of walrus noises. Shh. And I still might use those songs. <laughs> and that was like some like dead ass an artist that was like big, a big name just released walrus noises. And Drake could do it and it'll hit number one. That's true. That's stupid fame though. 
when you're so famous, anything stupid you do still makes it. Then again, we have Scoop. I, I like that song. You do like that song, but it exists. I mean, if that song didn't hit number one, then it wouldn't have hit number one. But it still, it still got, it still made a money. Um, kind of, sort of. Like I don't know. It's that song was that song was interesting. It was it was a moment. It was um. <sighs> Greatest Kanye song. No. By himself. That's what he said. No. He said it himself. That's not quite what he said about that song. Anyways, we can move on. Did we ever even end up talking about existence? We started talking about existence. And then I got us distracted, didn't I? That's my bad. Yeah, it's totally fine. I understand. Sometimes you um sometimes we, we go on tangents. But that's okay, because they're interesting tangents. Mm-hmm. We don't say things that aren't interesting. So so what did you Especially your- not on the podcast. What are you talking about? We say things that aren't interesting. No, we're always interesting all the time. Why would you? Why would you even say that, Hayden? Yeah. No. No. Seriously. So, what did you want to talk about with existence? Why? Why do we exist? Why? I'm gonna keep all my statements regarding existence very short because I feel like they will be more poignant and will lead to more things. So, why? Why do we? Why, why do we exist? Yes. Are you asking me? Yes. So you're asking me personally why we believe I, uh, my my personal belief on existence. Yes. What if I don't want to share that with the general public? You don't have to. I mean, I can. I mean, it depends on what. It depends, because especially with my beliefs about like big questions like that, it's very, it's a very fluid and changing system for me. And I've, I've always told everyone that that, you know, depending on my general emotional state, I believe in one thing as opposed to another. Not always, you know, black or white, but there's, it's a gradient. It's like a little tide system. But I genuinely think there's a and this is this is more the more consistent themes is that there is a chaotic bit to existence and really you know i I'm, I'm a big proponent of finding your own purpose in life and assigning it to yourself and having that be like your general focus and so i'd say it doesn't really i i, it's, I i'm going to go this far it doesn't matter why i think i exist it just matters what purpose i get to myself and what i do with my existence and i say that for everyone else as well is the purpose larger than us or is the purpose defined by us I mean, you have to define your own purpose because no one else is going to do it for you. And if they do, then it might not be exactly what's the best for you. But everything that we do is defined by something. I mean, it's defi- I mean, everything we do is defined by our actions. Yeah, but our actions are all defined by the way that we think. And the way that we think is defined by things that are outside of our control beyond us. That's true. So I'd say give yourself a good purpose. Give yourself a good purpose, something that is good for everyone. But the ability to do that is defined by like the purpose that we give ourselves is also defined by things that are outside of our control that is true so do we define our own purpose i mean it's it's i mean i can do a question of free will yes and no yes there is a level of our cognition in which we can choose our purpose not everyone not everyone finds their life purpose you know it's not easy but there's a level of cognition which you know is influenced by chemicals in the brain and environment and all that jazz but i mean now you're getting into questions of free will we're gonna stay away from free will i mean we, yeah free will is a whole other debate for a whole other time it's not even a debate there's an answer but there's like a it's like a it's like a pseudo answer that doesn't that can't affect the way you act it's a nuanced answer yeah nuance i'm pretty sure we've talked about that though before i feel like we have i'm not sure if it's been on the podcast but i know one time in a parking lot of wendy's it we have we have more we have more more insightful conversations in the parking lot of Wendy's than we do on the podcast. That is not true. So, uh, it's been more personal, definitely though. That's because you know, and this this is sometimes we have more insightful co- conversations in the parking lot of Wendy's. That's true, but that's because you know here we have the um the level in which we can sh- we're comfortable sharing, whereas when it's just us hanging out, we can share much more personal information. Yeah. Which is, you know, if I, if I really wanted to, I could talk to Michael about my true, you know, opinions currently on existence. But right now, for me, because especially because of how, again, it cha- changeable it is for me, I'm just not going to go super deep into it, mostly focus on... I, and I, I'm, I'm more of a practical thinker when it comes to stuff like that, and that's why I focus more on defining your life purpose. Indeed. Well, how do you feel about existence? I exist. All right. Why? Because... That's the way of the world. Very simplistic. And that's some Occam's Razor right stuff right there. I feel like because I exist, then I must. There must be a purpose. 
That's true. We've had we've had a very we had an angry conversation a while back because I said something like um, nothing means anything basically because I was being I was in a super nihilistic kind of mood, which happens to everyone. Yeah, we all get there sometimes. And he 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 got he got mad. He's like, no, how dare you? Because if nothing means any if some things don't no more like what you said was that some things don't mean anything. Yeah. Basically. And my thought is that if some things don't mean anything, then nothing can mean every, anything. Well, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that's a jump, but I think... I that's what I said, that's, and that's how I feel. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like if some things don't mean anything, I don't think that anything doesn't exist for a reason. I don't think anything exists for no reason. I don't think... What about mosquitoes? Hmm, they exist to fuck everything up. Mosquitoes are the entropy of the universe. Mosquitoes are like the bits of the universe that were that were an accident. Like me? I wasn't an accident. I was intended. I just thought everyone should know that. Yeah, my, me, me too. But my, mosquitoes are not good. I mean, they are they are a very important food source in the animal kingdom. I don't like them. No one likes mosquitoes. But you see, that's the point. They are an important food source in the animal kingdom. Meaning they, have they, they have a purpose. But... Do, I guess that when we got into this debate a while ago, my thing is that purpose to me means that like they were assigned a role, when in reality they just happened into that role due to mere chances and genetics and evolution. And see, my idea is is that hum- is that everything does fall into the role that it exists for. But why? Do, how? Do, what makes it exist for? Because things fail at existing. Fail at existing? Yeah. Well, sometimes they're supposed to. But what makes them supposed to? Their existence. That's not an answer. It is an answer. Because, I mean, the way that genetics and evolution and everything like that works is it's not like something's... It's not like some hands guiding it. It's that you're I having, don't think that it's, it's like a, a hand guiding it's it. It's a little I happy more like... I feel like everything... If every Either everything happens on accident or everything happens on purpose. I mean, well, if you're looking... Because I... Because on back on evolution, we we get evolution due to mutations that are either advantageous, advantageous or disadvantageous. So like humans evolved to have these nice thick cerebral cortexes that are very large and dense in proportion to the rest of their brain and body. Yeah, but well, we couldn't really have even we couldn't have even gotten to those uh, to those evolution evolution wouldn't have even gotten to that point if something didn't exist. Well, something I, had to exist a certain way in order for it to exist the way that it does now. But those exist because of other mutations, other accidents, other yes, failures. Other things that would ha- other things that wouldn't have happened if they never existed in the first place. That doesn't mean a purpose. That just means they're consequential. Yeah, consequential to their existence. I'm not. A, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm disagreeing with things that they're supposed to be, and there is a purpose to it. Some things don't need to. Some things don't need to exist, right? Because in order, in order for anything to happen the way that it happens now, in order for everything that's happening right now to be happening, mm-hmm. something had to have happened. I, I wasn't disagreeing with that. And so, the thing, the reason that some things happen and some things, quote unquote, fail, is because it's it's the catalyst for what's happening right now. I wasn't. Uh, you you you're picking apart the wrong parts of what I said. Okay. Well, what am what am I missing? I was just crit- I was just disagreeing with you said that things have a purpose and that they are supposed to. I, I feel was, like it, I feel like to an extent their purpose is to be the catalyst. But the, but they didn't have a role. A purpose means a role. Well, I feel like, and this is where we always get hung up hung up when we yeah, have because like con- we had this conversation a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I feel like. A big issue with this conversation when we have it is the meaning of the word purpose. Yeah. When I say purpose, I mean just like like a reason for its existence. And I think everything exists for a reason. I just think the universe is more random and just that, you know, happy little accidents create a situation. I feel like for you know, the universe to be random, then everything is random, including yeah. existence. Yeah. I mean, it is because we don't, we don't know why life exists. It just happened. No. One day a prokaryote but fell I feel like in the because ocean. I, I mean, but I feel like if it wasn't supposed to happen, it wouldn't. I I genuinely feel like nothing happens that wasn't supposed to happen. I mean, that's just that's you know that's a sentence, right? And that sentence can't be argued with because it's a pure belief. And like I can't like that is either everything wasn't supposed to happen or nothing was supposed to happen. I don't think it's that black and white because I think I th- I think things just happen. I think you know you have the Big Bang, which is a which is a thing that happened of physics and chemistry and cobalt. But and at the same time, the Big Bang wouldn't have happened if it wasn't going to happen. Yes, but that's not what you said. No, but that's what I mean. That's different, though, because things happen. I just think things happen because they're, uh, it's all probability to me. It doesn't mean it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, but 
because things happen, things are happening. That's I haven't again. I'm not arguing against that. I'm not arguing that things happen in random without connection to other things. I'm saying that things happen. If you if you go back in the in the in the way that things have happened, if you go back down the scale of events of the universe, there's no purpose. As in, there's no like the purpose of a pen is to write. Agreed. Okay, so we're getting back into the semantics of the word purpose, which means but, we should but probably then, use a different word. Fine, but if you look into the semantics, then the word supposed. Like, for me, suppose, like, the, a pen is supposed to write. A pen is not supposed to kill someone. It was not created for that intention. Um, I disagree. You don't create a G2 pilot to kill someone. No, but a G2 pilot can be used to kill someone, and if it does, then it was supposed to. No. That's not what the word supposed to means. Well, that well supposed to well that well that depends on what on what you mean by supposed to because I'm using a dictionary be, definition. It, yeah, but I'm saying that if you're saying that it's supposed to because we assign that because we assign that purpose to them, then that's 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 smaller than what I'm talking about. No, but I'm just, but I'm saying but the word supposed to means it was assigned a purpose. I'm saying that beyond the assigned purpose, I'm talking about the purpose that came with its existence. But I'm saying, I guess here what more or less I'm saying is that because the universe is a series of calculations and mutations, and especially when you're thinking about like life is mutation. Speaking on life. But even the universe, the universe is just a series of probability of atoms arranging themselves in particular ways and quantum, and quantum mechanics and physical forces that are outside of control. I would say that because of that, sometimes people get killed by pens. Now we just took it in an entirely different direction because of an analogy I made. Do you understand what I'm saying? I dis- I still disagree with I, I'm I understand what I kind of understand what you're saying because but like it seems to me like when I take apart when I use when I don't agree with the word supposed to and and purpose that you just end up saying stuff that's like things happen because things happen before it which is the fucking course because like things happen in consequence. Of other I'm things. saying that things happen because things happen before and because things are happening things will happen and I feel like there's that's a harmony it. to that. I wasn't, but I wasn't arguing against that. I was arguing against the the idea that things happen because something is because something intended. When to I say that, that it's supposed to happen, what do you think I mean? That it happened because something, and I'm using the definition of supposed to. Things happen because something wanted to, because something gave it a purpose for it to happen that way. If a plan goes as it's supposed to, the plan went as the plan was planned. I disagree with your definition of supposed to. I am Google, going to Google turn, the definition. I am generally assumed or believed to be the case, but not necessarily so. Wrong definition of supposed. Yeah. <laughs> assume assume that something is the case on the basis of evidence or probability without proof or certain knowledge. No, also the wrong <laughs> definition of supposed. There's a used. To make a suggestion or hesitant admission. I'm just going to read that all That means I suppose. Like, I suppose. All right, here we go. Re- be required to do something because of the position one is in or an agreement one has made. That's kind of the definition I've been using. I'd say that things... So, when I talk about If one, you use a different like, word than suppose, this argument could totally just be agreed upon. <laughs> I guess. Well... <sighs> I mean, if you just said things happen because they happen, I'm like, okay, cool. Things happen because they happen. When I say things are supposed to happen, what I more so mean is that some things have to happen. And everything that has happened had to happen. Why, why do... I, I, I agree that everything that has happened has happened, but I don't think things have to happen. There are things that adjust the probability, but there's nothing that makes it like set in stone have to happen. I mean, nothing except for the fact that everything happened. But do we know things happen for sure? To the best of our knowledge. But I don't think things have to happen a certain way. Like, I don't have to make it to work today. I could die. I know, but if you were die, if you died, then you had to die. Did I have to die? Why? Because if you were going to die, then... If you were going to die, then you had to die. Otherwise, you wouldn't have died. Because if you didn't die, then the entire series of everything that happened in the universe from that point forward would be different than the way that it was already going to. And that's not to say that I believe in predestination, but it's more like I believe that everything happens the way that it happens. And 
everything happens the way that it's going to happen. I disagree with your definitions of had to die. I'm not saying that you have to. First of all, we all have to die. I mean, not necessarily. I feel like the universe is inevitable. And I feel like everything that happens is inevitable. Everything that happened was inevitable. So if you go to, if you on your way to work today, die, it was inevitable. But see, now I can do things on my way to work that would prevent me from dying. Yes. But let's say that those things didn't work out and you died anyway. Whether or not we die is typically beyond our control. Incorrect. Not incorrect. If I smoke cigarettes, I'm changing my outcome of my life. If I wear my seatbelt. When we die and how we die are things that we can, that we can, to the best of our knowledge, avert. But whether or not we die is beyond our control. That's not entirely true. I feel like, I mean, there's... No, a, it no, is true. Here's a, why it's true. Here's why it's true. No, here, there's a strong argument that says that we could cure death. People are actively arguing for a medical research into death. That, that sounds cancerous. How's that cancerous? It just sounds cancerous. Like it just, just sounds like there was just, that just sounds like a terrible idea. Why? It just does. Because, I mean, who? I mean, wh- but if it's going to happen, then it's going to happen. Why do we have to die? Tell me that. I don't know. Harmony. The har- that's not a real reason. It is a real reason. Because it sounds better in your head. Because harmony is just things that sound better. No, not that kind of harmony. No, but that's what it means. Harmony is not about how things sound necessarily. Things that rhyme. Not quite the kind of harmony that I'm talking no, about. No, but I'm saying like in the harmony universe, the universe makes sense is what you're saying. Yes. But why? Why does dying make sense? Because it does. That's a shitty explanation. I know it's a sh- it's not really a shitty explanation if you really think about it. You said like, I know a, it was a shitty exis- explanation on an existential level, right? Like, and this and this is what it comes down to, and it's so hard to explain, which is why I use words like purpose, which is why I use words like suppose. You know, I vehemently disagree with them. I know because it's so simple but so complicated. Everything happens the way that it will happen. Everything happens the way that it's that it happens. Everything that has happened happened the way that it would happen, and everything that will happen ha- is going to happen the way that it's going to happen. I think I also think you use too many. Um, uh, Inevitably, everything is going to happen the way that it's going to happen. Things are going to happen the way they're going to happen, but inevitably. But like what you're saying is you're saying is the way the way you say it makes it sound like there's like lines that things are going down, right? When really things are just the consequences of other things. It's like a spider's web to me. Yes. But but the, but the way that the like spiders I don't like your work, words. It's, well, then, well, then are we arguing semantics or are we, we arguing We have been arguing semantics this whole time. Because I think we both agree that things happen because other things happen, right? Yes. Things are consequences. Yes. And the, the way the future will work is that they will be consequences to actions of now and the past. Yes. There. Good. Thank <laughs> God. Okay, we're done. We're done. We figured it out. I, I like, I just, like, it's just the word supposed had Can you please purpose. check the time?